Hello there, my name is Scott Schaefer and I am the creator of this channel, Theme Park Galaxy, and the most common question that I get when people do leave comments on my videos is what camera I use to film a particular ride, specifically like Splash Mountain or the Haunted Mansion. I have videos, low light videos that are filmed really well. You can actually see what's actually going on in the ride inside on those rides. So a lot of people want to know what cameras I film with. So I decided to make this video and I'm going to break down exactly what cameras I use, what lenses I use, and go over the reasons why I use these cameras as well. Just a spoiler, I mainly use two different cameras. Uh, there's a couple others I use sparingly, but it's mainly just two cameras. So the first camera that I'm gonna talk about is this one right here. This is the Sony a7 III. You can see it right there, it says a7 III. Currently has the lens off. I'll talk about the lens in just a second. Uh, but the a7 line of cameras is excellent. It's, it's fantastic for uh, low light filming. It's the best out there. So that's specifically why I chose that camera. If you wanna film inside rides, uh, like the Haunted Mansion or the inside portion of Splash Mountain, any any type of ride or Indiana Jones, uh, all, all at Disneyland. If you wanna film any of those inside, uh, there's a, those are low light conditions and you need a camera like the Sony A7 series uh, that films really well in low light situations. Most cameras will not be able to film in there. It'll come out all blurry. You won't be able to see a lot. So that's why I picked the uh, Sony series. Now they have the um, the Sony a7 I, the a7 II, this is the a7 III, and then they have a couple that have come out after that. I haven't upgraded those because this one really isn't much different than the newer ones. I wouldn't, if you want to save a little money, I wouldn't get the a7 I, that's a very old camera, but the a7 II is actually very good as well. So you can get the a7 II or the a7 III or one of the newer ones, but get one of the Sony uh, A7 lines, and those are fantastic for low light situations. Now when you buy this camera, um, I bought this camera, it came with a kit lens. So this is a kit lens, It'll you know the camera will always come with a lens. Uh, this is a zoom lens, so you can change the focal point to zoom in to your target if it's far away. Uh, but this is not a very good lens. It is a, um, a 3.5 to 5.6 light aperture, Probably not gonna know what that is to start with, but basically that's how much light it requires for this lens to uh, have a clear picture. And the lower the number, the better the, better the lens is. So this is 3.5 to 5.6, depending on how far you are zoomed in. Basically, um, I, I bought this one right here. Uh, this is a 1.4 aperture and it's locked in at 24 um, mm. So you can't, you can't zoom in with this, it has one focal length, um, but it has much lower requirement for light. So the light that it needs is much lower. This is a fantastic lens, um, and it has a wide field of view. So another thing that you have to know is your field of view. Um, it's very important, especially if you're gonna be filming like rides inside, um, the, the viewpoint of the lens is going to be very important. Like this lens, this is the kit lens, it's a 28, to 70 view viewfinder. So um, the lower the number, the wider uh, the shot you'll be able to get in the, the the lens. This is 28 to 70, and this kit, this um, specific lens that I bought that I actually use is a 24 um, view viewfind. So you can see quite a bit in this. I think Sony actually came out with a new lens. I'll put it up on the screen. That's actually wider view. Um, but I haven't bought that because it's like $2,500. But it's important that you have at least a 24 um, sized viewpoint for your lens because when you're inside of a ride, you're going to, most of the objects you're trying to film are just a few feet in front of you. And if you have a very, a very narrow viewpoint, you're not gonna be able to get a full picture when you're filming. So it's very important that you have a wide angle lens when you're trying to film these rides. Now this is what the camera looks like with the lens actually on it. You can see it's kind of a big camera. Um, it's not super big, but it, it is a little large to be carrying around, but this is the best camera that you can use to film indoor low light situations. So I use this for any indoor ride I will film with this. Uh, one of the disadvantages of this camera, it is actually has somewhat bad image and video stabilization. So what's that means? is if you're on the ride and you're like shaking it around, it's not gonna be able, there's gonna be a lot of a lot of movement when you record the video. And, and I'll, I'll give you an example, the Indiana Jones, I'll have a link to that video. Um, I use this camera and obviously that ride moves around a lot. So there is movement in that video. It's just something that can't be really be avoided with this camera. It does, doesn't work too great with image stabilization. 
But if you're on a ride that doesn't have a lot of movement, like Haunted Mansion, um, that mo ride moves very slowly. Uh, there's not a lot of movement. And basically, you can just hold it steady. And I just turn my body. I don't actually move the camera. I turn my body when I'm recording, and that actually lowers the amount of movement that will show up in the video. Now, because this has a bad kind of video stabilization, and because it is quite large, I don't use this for outside rides. I have never used this like to film on a roller coaster or anything that moves really fast or is really, really bumpy outside. You're gonna to wanna to use a different camera. This is for indoor low light situations. Now, the camera that I use for outdoor situations is actually a GoPro. I use the GoPro Hero 9 to film any type of roller coaster, any type of ride that is outside. This is fantastic. Uh, to use on these types of rides. It's very small. You can just hold it in your hand. It's very easy. A lot of times I will take this uh, stick that it mounts on as well. This is not a selfie stick. It's just a handheld device. You can't take selfie sticks to most parks, um, but you can actually just take a stick that you hold as long as it doesn't extend. So I'll take this and I'll film any type of roller coaster or outside ride. Now this camera even though it's tiny, is absolutely amazing with image and video stabilization. You can shake this thing around all over the place and the picture will look perfectly smooth. Uh, it won't be jumping around, it won't be hard to view. So it's fantastic with that type of scenario that the other camera is not very good at. Now the one problem with the uh, GoPro series, doesn't matter which GoPro you're using, is that these are actually very, very bad in low light situations. So what the other one is good at this one is very bad at. So indoor um, low light rides or even at nighttime, if you're trying to film at night, this GoPro will not work very well. And the main reason why that is, is it, it needs a large image sensor in the camera in order to pick up low levels of light. Because the GoPro is so small, it just it's not very good at it. Maybe someday they'll figure out how to do that. But as of right now, GoPros are not good for filming inside or at nighttime. A couple things I want to mention about the GoPro. I actually take this mod uh, that you can buy on the GoPro website, and this is called the, um, and this right here, this little attachment that goes over, this is called the Media Mod. And the main reason that I use this, it has this little, um, this little wind protector basically over the microphone. It has a larger microphone than the normal GoPro uses. It has a wind protection. And the main reason that I use that is when you're going on, say, like a roller coaster and you're going really fast, you'll get wind sounds. Um, on the microphone of the GoPro and it'll kind of block out the sound. You'll just hear like wind, shh, just hear wind gushing. And basically that doesn't provide for a very good video. So that's why I use the media mod. This windscreen will actually block a lot of the wind noise. And so it won't be um, as annoying if you didn't actually have that. Now, if you want to film with a GoPro in any type of park, I would recommend, if you're trying to save a little money, don't get any type of GoPro that's older than, say, a GoPro Model 7, a Hero 7. Or, you know, if you don't care about money, just buy whatever the newest GoPro model is. But that's because between the Hero 6 and the Hero 7, there was a big improvement in video and image stabilization. So uh, GoPro Hero 7 and on are much better at stabilizing the video as opposed to 6 and below. But this is fantastic for any type of roller coaster or outside ride or ride that moves around a lot that's outside. Uh, this is a fantastic camera. If it worked in low light situations, this, is, this would be all you would need. But because it's so bad with low lights, uh, you're going to need a much better camera. That's why I have the Sony a7 III to film inside dark rides. So a couple things I wanted to add. Um, I think it's important that you film if you're trying to film in the parks. Um, if you're trying to, you know, be successful on YouTube or something, if you're just doing it for yourself, you can film however you want. But I think it's important that you film in 4K nowadays. Uh, 1080p is considered the standard to film in, but 4K is what's going into the future. Uh, so it's, it's important that you find a camera. Both of these cameras, the um, GoPro and the a7 III, film in 4K. And I recommend that you film in 4K as well. I also use this GoPro for all of the walkthrough videos. I know a lot of people like those where I just walk through the park. I will have this um, mounted to the top of this thing right here. It just goes in like that. And I'll just walk around with this stick all over the park. So that's how I film those walk around videos as well. Now, just briefly, I want to mention a couple other cameras. I don't use these cameras very often, but I have in the past. So this is actually a basically a spy cam. Uh, there's a camera right there, and it has the connector, so it connects 
uh, it's, it's firmly attached to your head when you put it on. And the reason I use this sometimes is because some roller coasters, um, they will not allow you to take anything on the ride in your pockets or anything. They'll have lockers. You can't take anything on, right? So you can't even take a GoPro if they say, you know, you can't take anything on those rides. But most of them will allow you to wear headgear if it's attached to your, your body, which is why I have this connection. So it goes fully around my head. It won't come off. So in some scenarios on roller coasters that are very strict with the rules, I will use this spy cam right here. It's not really a spy cam, but it has you know a camera in the front and I can film with this. This does not film um, to the quality of a GoPro. So if you have the ability to use a GoPro over this thing, I would much rather you use the GoPro. It's gonna film higher quality, but I have on occasion used this when I'm not allowed to take a GoPro. I've also on occasion, I just damaged my case, but uh, I've, I've used my phone. This is a iPhone 10. So it's a few years old, uh, but it films in 4K. So uh, it's still good to film this. I have used this on occasion. I used this at the OC Fair. I'll have a link to that video. Uh, I just wanted to test it out to see how it would film in low light conditions. I filmed the Haunted Mansion uh, at the OC Fair, not the, the Disneyland one, but the OC Fair Haunted Mansion. I filmed with this. It didn't do very good in low light conditions. It didn't do terrible, um, but it, it was it didn't compare to the, the Sony a7 III. So my two main cameras, like I mentioned, are the Sony a7 III. This really is the best camera out there for low light filming as well as the GoPro, this is the Hero 9 model. Uh, it's the best for filming roller coasters and has the best image stabilization you can possibly find in a camera. So there you go, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about anything else I didn't mention in the video, be sure to leave a comment below, I'll happily answer it. Thanks everyone and have a fantastic day.